for. And uh, thinking about the revival, thinking about being, turning our lives back over to God, a refreshing. And you know, that's what revival is for, is for the Christian folks, for us to be revived. And I want that. I want that. And I hope you do too. Let's sing page 434. Revive us again. I'm Let's not sure to be on that. We may sing this first verse. We're going to do it like you might have sung it years ago. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the sweet of God, who has shown us our sin, O and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Are you ready for this morning to encounter the living God in your life today? I pray that's why you're here. We've been praying this morning for you, praying that God's Spirit would move in this place and lives would be touched, hearts would be open, and lives would be changed today. And you're here today, and we just bless you in Jesus' name, and thank you for coming and being a part of our worship today. Let me just make one quick announcement. This is the season for our Margaret Lackey State Missions Offering. And our goal for the state this year is $2 million. Our goal for the church is $1,200. And let me encourage you to begin now praying about what would be your part in helping to support our state missions. Our state missions offering goes to uh, help take care of expenses and the maintenance and upkeep of, of the camps, Camp Garraway, as well as Central Hills Baptist Retreat. It goes to support mission volunteers that our state sends out across our country. It goes to support a variety of different missions efforts from disaster relief to uh, criminal justice ministries and language and deaf ministries throughout our state. Just be in prayer. There's a, a little booklet in the pew rack in front of you as well as an offering envelope. And let me encourage you today to pick that up and ask the Lord what would be your part in helping us exceed our goal of $1,200. Would you do that? I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that God is here and God is up to something today. I hope you've come with a sense of ex excitement, a sense of anticipation about what God is going to do. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we lift you up and we give you praise, glory, and honor for the privilege that we have in coming into this place and worshiping you today. Father, help us to focus our hearts, our minds, and our spirits on the things that you lay before us. As we worship you in song and in word and in truth, Father, would you be honored 
and glorified in all that we think, do, and say. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you know what tomorrow is about? What's tomorrow? What does that mean? Huh? She has no idea what life what, does, what is, what is, does anybody, can anybody give some kind of uh, brief history about what Labor Day is? All right, I'll tell you. There was two guys, a machinist and a carpenter. Their both names were McGuire. One was M.C., and the other was M.A., no relationship whatsoever, but each one of them claimed uh, responsibility for having created Labor Day. In the late 1800s, it came to be. In about 1909, this Sunday, prior to Labor Day, was designated as Labor Sunday. And the purpose of that was the enrichment of spiritual values and education as far as labor is concerned. The working man has built this nation from the, from the plains of Kansas, Nebraska, growing vegetables, wheat, and to the machinists in Chicago and the carpenters in southern Mississippi. All these folks have played a tremendous part in building this country. And that's what the purpose of Labor Day is to recognize that tomorrow. So when you're cooking your hamburgers, Think about what folks did to establish and bring to this point what this nation is about. I sort of thought it was Labor Day. Well, that's what I do. I will labor, but... Um, uh, he said the men, I think the women, we labor too, did not we? We better move along <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we got a Labor Day. Aren't y'all glad? I love to be celebrating with my family. And I tell you what, I got a passel of them over there on the side. And, um, How many? A passel, if you know what that means. And Sazie told me this morning, I, I, I'm completely half-dressed when I bring them to church. I kept looking for the blouse that I took into the bedroom to put on. And I kept asking, what happened? Where's that top I was going to wear? And Sazie said, I saw Parker doing it over his head like that. And he gave it a throw. And Parker said, none of that's true. And she told me a cat got it, so I'm not sure. So y'all pray for me. I love having all my grandchildren, but I'm telling you what, they're fun. They're fun. Next week when we're, um, or the rest of this week, I can't get this revivalist again out of, out of my head. Uh, that, that last verse. 434, wasn't it? We're not going to sing it, guys. I just want to read this right here. This verse, um, revive us again, fill each heart. We need to say, revive me again. Fill my heart. Fill my heart with your love. May my soul be rekindled with fire from above. So let that be our prayer this week, okay? The rest of this week, let's, let's, say, let's sing this last verse and let's, let's say this last verse as a prayer. And then when we come back for our revival starting Sunday morning, we will be ready for revival. I'm ready for revival. I hope you are. And we're going to ask that. Page 11, come thy fount of every blessing. Let's stand together again for worship of our tithes and offerings. Bring me, take me home by thy good grace. 
courts are closed. Let's do that last verse one more time. Oh, oh to grace, how great a dinner. Daily I'm strength to be. Live thy goodness like a fair. By my wandering heart to be. today. There's a sweet, sweet spirit here. Let's sing this. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know it is the spirit of the Lord. Presence 
above all names, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Messiah, our Emmanuel, God with us. Save us, God. Save us this morning. It is our prayer that in my life will be lifted up. In my life, be lifted high in our world. Be lifted high in our love. Be lifted high. Actually, do me a favor and put that last slide that was up there back up on the screen. (laughs) It all came flooding back just a minute ago. Two years ago today, Terry and I got up on a Sunday morning, and we put on our shorts, grabbed our Bibles, put some folding chairs in the back of the truck, and grabbed a a radio. We went to the Delo Water Park. And we had church. It was just the two of us. And we went down and we took our chairs and set them on the rocks down near the river. And we sat and we read scripture to each other and we prayed and we prayed for each other. And we worshiped and we listened to music and we sang. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. But that's what we did. Because we went that Sunday with the intention of not being a part of an organized church. And we cried out to God. 
and he came to our rescue. Because little did I know that two weeks from today, I would hear this song for the very first time. And it was in this place. Because God knew our hearts that we did want to be where he was. And he showed us that God is here. And God is still here. And we praise the Lord for what he's done in our lives and allowing us to come and be a part of your lives. And I just, as we were singing that, I leaned over, I said, Terry, I said that, that first time we heard that song was that first Sunday that we were here. And uh, she said, yeah, it was. She said, today's the day we went to Dela Water Park. And I thought, oh, my. But uh, we're glad I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad I'm here today. I'm glad God's here today. My father-in-law, Terry's stepdad, Matt Lorch, was famous, had a famous saying. He, he would always say, God knows some stuff. And God has knit our hearts together, and uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, let me pray, and then we're going we're we're to look at, well, let me just pray. <laughs> Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you did come to our rescue. First, in the person of Jesus Christ, in giving us life in and through him. And also for coming to our rescue and bringing us all together in this place. Father, I believe with all my heart this is a very holy place because your presence is here. I felt it the first time I walked through the door and I feel it every time I come in. Father, it's because that you're in the hearts and minds and spirits of your people in this place. We give you glory and honor for all that goes on here. All that's said here is to lift you up. So, Father, just remind us today through your word of who you are and who we are in light of what you have done and what you're doing. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oftentimes we find in Scripture truths that share with us what God's responsibility is in our relationship with Him. But we often also find those things that are our responsibility in our relationship with Him. Sometimes they are conditional. If you do this, then this will happen. Then sometimes they're simply statements of truth that this is God's responsibility and this is what happens when God acts. This is your responsibility and this is what happens when you act. This morning I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to look at the last portion of verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, the last half of verse 5, 6, and 7. And when you hear these words, you're going to say, oh yeah, I believe that. But I want, you to, I want to challenge you this morning to ponder the depths of the truth that is declared through the Word of God. It says, God, uh, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. I don't know about you, but that ought to be an encouraging word to you today. 
I want you to understand what parts out of these two and a half verses of Scripture is God's responsibility, what parts out of these verses are our responsibility. That first, that last portion of verse 5 where it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now that right there is a statement of God of truth in what is God's responsibility. God gives grace to the humble. In verse 6 it says, Therefore, humble yourselves. Humble yourselves under the mighty power or the mighty hand of God. Now this is our responsibility. But here's the good news. Did you catch the last portion of the verse? Where it says, humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Whose power? Whose hand is it under? It's under the power and the hand of God Himself. While it is our responsibility, it comes with the power to accomplish it. Through God Himself. And it says that He may exalt you in due time. Now that's God's responsibility. That's God's portion. In His time and in His way, one translation says that He will lift you up. There's some of you here this morning that need the hand of God to reach down and lift you up. There's some of you that need to lean on what is God's responsibility, but we also need to act on what is our responsibility. Verse 7, it says, casting all your care upon Him. That is your responsibility, my responsibility, to cast our care upon Him. For He cares for you. That's His responsibility. Do you see it? Can you see what is your and my responsibility than what God does? How do you cast your care on God? How do you do that? What does it mean to cast your care, your anxiety? How do you do that? In Luke chapter 19, verse 35, there's only one other occasion where the word that is used for casting is present. And it's Luke 19, 35, and it's where... Jesus had given the instruction to the disciples to go and get the donkey, the young fold, and bring it back before he was to come into the city of Jerusalem for his entry and triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And it was there where the scripture tells us this. It says that uh, in verse 35 of Luke 19, it says, They brought it to Jesus, the donkey, and cast their garments on the colt. And they set Jesus on it. You see, the meaning of casting is straightforward. It's simple. If you have a garment on and you want an animal to carry it, you just simply throw it onto the back of the animal. What does he do? He carries your load. He carries your burden. You see, in this way, you don't have to carry it. It's on the animal. It's not on you. The donkey works for you and he lifts your load in the sense of Luke 19.35. But it's that same meaning and that same significance that tells us to cast our care upon Him. You see, God is willing to carry your anxieties, to carry your burdens, to carry your cares and concerns of this world in the same way that the donkey would carry baggage. You see, one of the greatest things about God of the Bible is this, that that He commands us to let Him work for us before He asks us to work for Him. Do you see it? Remember I told you this portion is God's responsibility. This portion is your responsibility. God goes hand in hand. 
walks hand in hand with us, willing to help. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says this, says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Psalm 55, verse 22 says this, says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and He will sustain you. How many of you have experienced that before? Where God sustains you, where you've walked through a valley, where you've been through difficult circumstances. And it's only through the very grace of God. Remember what did it say in the, in the, in the scripture? He gives grace to the humble. It's only been through the grace of God that's been provided in his sustenance to you when you've been willing to cast your care, your anxiety, your burden your load, and let Him carry it that you've experienced the fact that God loves you. Isaiah 46, 4 says this. It says, Even to your old age, I am He. And to gray hairs, I will carry you. That's good news, isn't it, Terry? Even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. I will carry and I will save. God is with you all the way. From the beginning to the end. Isaiah 64, 4 says, From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides thee who works for those who wait for him. See, God wants to be your burden bearer. God wants to carry your load. God wants to work for you. So I'm inviting you today to simply throw your garments and cast your care upon the Lord. But practically speaking, how do you do that? <laughs> I don't know about you, but this is, this is kind of the way I work. I say, all right, God, here. You take that. And I, Lord, I give it to you. I need you to take care of it. And uh, just the sooner the better. Lord, I, 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 I need you to to handle this. God, it's still here. Well, in the meantime, let, let, me, let me look at it again. And let me see. Um, maybe I can... And I do that. I battle, I battle with what I give to God and I pick it back up and I take it. You see, I give it to Him. Casting is what? It's throwing it. It's throwing it. Can I tell you that there, and there's a better chance that you're going to hit what you throw it at the closer you are to it? So the closer you walk to God in your daily life, the easier it becomes to cast your cares on Him. So practically, how you do it? Well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do something this morning. I need some help. Michael, could you help me over here? Brody, come over here. Y'all pass these out if you would. There you go. Just make sure everybody that would like to have one, all it says is a little piece of paper that says, My Cares. These are my cares. Now, I want you to go ahead and while, while these are coming to you, I want you to find a pen or a pencil. Because I want you to, to do something. I want you to personalize this. I want you to take and I want you to write your cares. Your cares. This, this is such a personal deal. This is, this is, this is a, a, a call to a specific care, a specific burden, a specific anxiety that you want to lay on God. You do this by trusting Him. You see in verse 7, in verse 7, it says it, it, there's a relationship between 
that specific burden, that specific care that you have, that concern that you have in God's responsibility. It says, casting all your cares on Him. And the second half of the verse says, because, because He cares for you. He cares for you. You see, the answer is to trust that He does that. That He cares for you. Believe this promise. Trust Him. It's a matter of practical trust. The promise doesn't just hang out there in the air. It's connected. It's connected to the command. And the promise is meant to show you how to obey the command. Here's the command. Cast your cares on Him. Here's the promise. God cares for you. That's huge. That's big. The Creator of all the universe cares for for you. Oftentimes we, we think of God as being a distant and impersonal, and it's hard to make that contact, but it's, it's really not hard at all. God cares for you. This means He cares about the thing that has you worrying. He cares about the things that you are burdened with. So I want you to take, and I want you to write on here those things on, all over this page. It may, be, uh, it may be work, it may be relationship, it may be family, it may be finances, it may be health, it may be a variety of different things. This is, only, this is just you and your needs, your cares, your concerns. Very specific to you. You see, trusting God is more than something abstract. How many of you say God is trustworthy? Is God trustworthy? He can be trusted, He can save the lost, and He can work out all things for the good. But this specific text means lay a specific anxiety, a specific care, a specific concern on God. Trust Him specifically that He cares for you. Believe that He is God. His purposes cannot be thwarted. In Job chapter 42 verse 2 it says, I know that you can do all things, says Job, and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Big word. Means that no, it can't be changed. It's going to happen. If it's God purposed it, it's going to happen. When He says that He cares, it's going to happen. It means that He will not stand by and let things develop without His influence. It means that He will act. He will work. Now, it may not always work out the way that we think it ought to. But you see, God's looking at a different picture than what you and I see. We see them, that just this small portion of who we are and small portion of our life. And we don't see it in the context of all that God sees. He can be trusted He's God. You ever stopped and thought about all the connections that God makes in your life? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> There's no way that you and I can know all the connections that God makes in our life. Those moments at just the right moment, and we, we call them here at Dry Creek, we call them God moments, where God just shows up. Where your thought is going in this direction in your life, and you may be headed down the road, and there's a sign. Maybe a church sign. Or it may be a road sign. Or it may be someone speaking on the radio, or someone just interjecting, and, and God orchestrated that. I shared Wednesday about a God moment I had Wednesday, early Wednesday morning, and it was, 
it was amazing. It was amazing because God took and, and gave me an encouraging word in three different areas of my, my readings that morning. It was the same verse over and over and over. And then he did it the next morning as well. That's God. He cares. He cares for you. He cares for me. Casting your anxiety, your cares on God means trusting Him to handle a very specific situation. And if you believe that He cares, if you truly believe that He cares, and that's what His promise says, and if you truly believe that He is God, then your anxiety and your fears can be lifted. What is it that keeps them from being lifted, though? Oftentimes it's because we walk right back over and we snatch it back out of God's hands and we try to, try to handle it, try to deal with it. We allow the grief of the moment or the anxiety of the moment to take control instead of allowing God to take control. Now there's a very specific connection to this whole idea of casting your cares on the Lord and that connection is with prayer. We find it in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It says this, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Again, 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, cast all. It's important that you understand that word, all, means all. Not just some. Not just yesterday's. Not just today's. All your cares upon Him because He cares for you. Philippians 4, 6 says, Cast your anxiety on the Lord by praying and letting your request be made known to Him. You see, that connection is simple. It's simple. It's, it's trusting that God cares about your anxiety and when you express it in prayer, prayer is the trust turned towards God and spoken to Him. And that's the practical nature of how you go about doing this. Now, have you taken your, your cares and have you written your cares before the Lord today? Are you ready to cast your cares? Would you do that? Can I show you how I want you to do it today? I'm not going to ask you to throw paper because then we'll have to have somebody around picking up all the paper. I'll pick up the paper I threw a minute ago. I'm going to ask you to take that, that pen or if you've got a marker, I'm going to ask you to do this. My God cares for me. My God cares for me. This is just a simple act of recognizing and a reminder. Because I'm not going to ask you to throw this away. I'm not going to ask you to come up and lay it on the altar. But I'm going to ask you to stick it in your Bible. And you're casting it on the Lord. And any time you're tempted over the next several days, <laughs> next several hours, or the next ten minutes to pick them back up again, I want you to look at that piece of paper and remember what you wrote, that your God cares for you. So are you willing to take your responsibility today? God's willing to own up to His share. Are you willing to do yours? I'm inviting you to do that by casting your cares on the Lord. We're going to have an invitation hymn in just a minute. I'm going to pray in just a minute. The praise team is going to come up and they're going to lead us in a closing hymn. And During this invitation, here's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you if there's something that you're carrying, a load that you're carrying, that you're 
giving to God today, very specifically. I'm going to ask you to step out from where you're seated. I want you to make your way down front. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for everyone here who has something that they need to lay before the Lord. And let me come alongside you as your pastor and help carry and cast it to God. Father God, I pray in this moment, Lord, that you have spoken, and Lord, that you would continue to speak, to challenge us, to respond in faith to what you've asked us to do today simply to cast our care on you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You come as we sing. Page 505. Thank you. 